Good morning. My name is Scott Rudd, the Chief Strategic Officer at T3Live.com. And I'm Brittany Umar, and together we bring you Morning Call Express. So we're seeing green arrows around the world after a delay in military action in Syria has been delayed and PMI came in better than expected. Our futures are up about 12 to 16 handles. So, Scott, do you think we hold? Well, that, that's a question for most traders coming in. I think if you're a macro investor, you know everyone was trying to be a fear monger, get you out of the market. That the bottom line is, if you if you've been, you know, if you had a plan for the past 30 years and survived 1987, 2001, 2008, you know what? Stay the course. And if you're a young investor, the same. But for traders like ourselves, who probably took risk down into the weekend, you know, you're coming in saying, okay, what do I have to do with this 12 to 14 handle gap up? If you look here at the chart of the spiders. You know, you will see that, you know, we've been in a corrective process that started, you know, I would say in the end of July with this head and shoulders top. We came in and we're hugging the, the, the longer term trend line from here. So I would say some are even caught short. So with some people flat footed and some people short, it creates a, you know, a, a pretty actionable area. So I would say right now we're opening just about at, you know, last week's high. So I would say give it 30 minutes. If for 30 to 60 minutes we stay above 165, you could see a bit of a short squeeze and some guys who are flat buy some stock and then you'll see, you know, a move to maybe fill this gap. And then from there, you have a big time resistance here. And I think the bears are pointing to the fact that this could be, you know, a bigger head and shoulders, you know, format. And I like this little one where this right shoulder is in the process of being built. So I think you have to look at a very short term or intermediate you know on, on the next week or so and but if you're long term you stay the course well we've seen some areas of weakness and we've seen some areas of strength and the bears seem to be able to make their case for being short looking at the dow which was down over four percent for august and the financials which did not show leadership right and, and the dow i think was down over four percent for august so there are some technicians saying that these are the biggest companies you know in the world if they're selling that that's a precursor for more selling which we shall see you know you look at the chart of the dow and you and i could see using the diamonds that this could be a case for you know another head and shoulders formation with this being the left shoulder this being the head and if that's the case you know you're going to get a right shoulder built which sometimes take time and then we do have a neckline here so that resistance comes in somewhere between 151 to 152 so again very active short term we'll see what we could do here if the dow or the diamonds can get above 148 or 149 ish there is some room to bounce, but at that particular point, that's when you're going to see the rubber match. Well, and in looking for a silver lining, we've got the Qs above its 50-day, and we have strength out of the biotechs. You know what? There's, there's always a silver lining as well. You know, so you're either half full or half empty, but I think both ways you could have made some money. There were spots to be short in August and spots to be long. And in tech, you look at the Qs here, you know, the Qs are above the 50-day moving average. So there are some signs of strength in tech. You could have been long something like Tesla, and it didn't matter what the market was doing. Something like Netflix, it also trending higher. Even something like Facebook, you know, above the A in 21 days. So there were some things to be long, even in a broad-based, you know, corrective market uh, situation. Right, but in terms of gold and silver, now last week you said that it was actually a better spot to sell than buy. What do you think now heading into this week? Well, like like everything else, entries and exits matter. You know, the June 28th low is a great spot to be long. So talked about, you know, maybe selling into last week, and I guess you know everyone is right here and there. And at this point, it was a better sell. You know, then by considering the type of move that gold had, we talked about this red dog reversal down here. You know, you had a nice move up. This was another buyable entry. So into this spot, I said, you know what, maybe get out, you know, sell some. I bought some puts, you know, and I probably get out early on Friday. But anyway, you know, so this is probably a key spot for intermediate guys in gold. They probably want to see the GLDs hold above 132 to continue what has been, you know, somewhat of an upward trend since these lows and you do still have some room to get to there before people start saying this reflex move is over. And of course, we'll be talking about all of this and more in the full morning call, so stay with us.